I would say the likelihood of a recession by late 2019 is probably between 10 and 20 percent because I don't see uh, overheating and I don't see financial imbalances. Now, there's always the possibility of an unforeseen supply shock. But in terms of overheating, consider the following statistic. The core PCE price index has been, been within five basis points of the Fed's 2% target for five months in a row. That's just an uncanny amount of inflation anchoring. Now, of course, expectations matter, but they too are well contained. However, I don't want to lose my gloomy economist card here. So let me say what I do think is coming at the end of 2019 is also is actually a very serious problem. You know, just because you don't cross zero doesn't mean that growth deceleration isn't a problem. And in fact, I expect growth to decelerate significantly, maybe 150 basis points by the end of uh, 2019, early 2020. So you could have slow growth and a little bit higher inflation, I suppose, in that recipe. Lanny, what do you see uh, as you look out a year hence? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Jared. I think it's a relatively low likelihood event in 2019. I think really the focus is on early 2020. We have some very early indicators, for example, new building permits, which tend to be about a 16 month out indicator, have suggested that there might be some slowing and potentially a recession. That's Q1 of 2020, not a 2019 occurrence. And obviously, as your uh, previous reporter indicated, this question of trade and what's happening mm -hmm. in particular with China has the potential to really bring us into, uh, into focus in the latter half of 2019, potentially into 2020. Now, obviously, a lot of this is in the president's control, quite frankly. If the president is able to eke out some kind of a ray of hope at the G20 meeting in Buenos Aires here in a couple weeks, uh, that might begin to back us off of some of these predictions. But uh, 2020 is where I would really keep the focus at this point. Let me let me turn. I, I, I totally agree that trade is is right there, either number one or number two on the agenda. But Lanny, let me let me turn you to the Fed. Uh, do you think the Fed uh, should, as some have called for, uh, take the foot off the hard brake and and maybe wait a little bit into 2020 before raising rates, presuming they raise them uh, in three weeks time? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the likelihood of, of a December increase is, is very high. Uh, as we move into 2019, I think, you know, they ought to be looking probably more closely at two rather than four or two rather than three. But I, but I don't see a strong rationale there for backing off completely. I do think that once we get up toward neutral, you know, likely, likely we'll want to slow things down a little bit. But in terms of completely taking the foot off, no, I don't think that that's called for uh, as we move into 2019 and, and through 2019. Same, same question to you, Jared. Uh, a lot of people, <clears throat> including uh, our own Jim Cramer, have said that the Fed uh, could do well and serve the economy and the markets by backing off a little bit and taking a wait and see attitude. Do you agree? You know, I kind of do. I, I, I wouldn't call what they're doing, by the way, hard breaking. I think the forward guidance has been extremely explicit. And I consider, you know, something like 25 basis points a quarter to be mm. more of a break tap than a break slam. But given the fact that there's so many other kind of headwinds doing the Fed's work for them, whether it's a strong dollar, whether it's declining price of oil, whether it's uh, global markets, whether it's uh, uh, equity markets, whether it's the uh, Treasury rate kind of pushing up, um, I think there are enough factors that are kind of slowing things down, especially on the price side, mm -hmm. that the Fed could afford to take a pause uh, within the normalization campaign. I don't think it's a huge deal either way, but if I were sitting around that table, I'd want to entertain that possibility. Yeah.